Welcome to episode 243 of Clarity Compressed. My name is Paul J. Daly. Today we're going to talk about the changing of seasons. And I'm coming to you from one of the most beautiful places in the entire world, in my opinion. <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. It is an absolutely glorious fall day here in upstate New York. I'm in Syracuse and behind me, if you're watching, you can see the trees. They aren't at peak yet, but they look unbelievable and amazing. This changing of the seasons that happens every year is, in my opinion, why Syracuse is one of the best places to live. People are sleeping on upstate New York. Let me just tell you that. I try to keep the secret in because I don't want it to be too crowded with too many people, but upstate New York has one of the most beautiful falls that you will ever see anywhere. Just the hills, the breeze, the temperature, the festivities, the apple festivals, just the smell in the air. You smell some of those wood-burning stoves fire up a little bit. All the animals are moving around because it's much more comfortable. And this is an indicator of what happens every year, the changing of the seasons. I just got back from a trip in Miami where I was at the NAMED Conference, National Association of Minority Auto Dealers. I spent three days there in Miami, and I gotta say, it was 85 and sunny every day. Went down to like 73 at nighttime. In the daytime, it was humid, and I hated it. I hated it. And like, I'm not hating on the people who love the beach weather, but man, I am ready for the fall. And it's the, always the worst when I have to leave home in the season that I love the most. Like, hey, look, Check back with me in February. I'll be ready to get the heck out of here because of the snow and the cold and the cloudiness, right? Then I want to go to Miami. But in October, I want to be here. This always reminds me. It always gets me thinking. It always gets me in the mood of and, and the mentality of season changes. And I'm not just talking about the weather. I'm not just talking about temperature and, you know, moving from one to the next. But I really, it puts me in, in a different place in my mind and in my heart when I think through the season changes that actually have happened in my life over the last year and kind of the ones that I know will be happening. And for anybody that tries to work really hard to get your life right where you want it and try to just nail it in the place and think that you found like the perfect balance or the per perfect mix of things or maybe you're pursuing the perfect mix of things, let me just speak something into you right now. Like, there never is a perfect mix of things that doesn't change and doesn't shift at some point. Life changes. Just all of like creation and biology and all that stuff. It is just cyclical. Everything is cyclical. It moves from one thing to the next to the next. Some are more favorable. Some are less favorable. Some are more pleasant. Some are less pleasant. Some you naturally move toward because it suits your personality and your preference. And some you're just like, hey, like this isn't my full personality or, and my full preference. But we always have a choice like what we're going to do with those seasons. And the same is true in the opposite. Maybe it's really rough for you right now. Maybe it's something you're not enjoying. Maybe the balance in your life is off and you think that's what it, it's always going to be. But let me just remind you that like things in your life that have changed have always gone from one thing to the next to the next. They've never stayed the same forever. As a matter of fact, when people get upset or like a little scared or nervous about a changing of a season, there is a piece of you like where there's like a little, a little sense of loss where maybe you're moving past something that you really enjoyed. But nothing good in your life has ever come by things staying the same. Things, Good things in your life and the positive things and the relationships and the businesses and all those things, they've always come to you as a result of something changing. Always. As a result of something going from one thing to another thing. Actually, a lot of things in my life have come because an unfavorable thing or something I perceived as unfavorable has happened. And on the flip side, it's brought deep and meaningful change into my life. You know, one, one, at one point, my, one of my businesses, my first one was acquired and I, it was a big change of a season. Like, yes, it gets exciting to sell a business. It gets exciting to kind of see some reward from all those years. And in my case, it was about 15 years of, of just leaning all the way in, not pulling money out of the company, right? Just people making more than I did or, you know, working longer hours than everybody else, right? That's just the nature of building a business, right? You should never expect someone else to like do want it more than you do if it's your business. But I, I get, a, you know, I'm getting off the point a little bit. The point is that when I got to the end of that, there was this little bit of season change and a little anxiety and fear that happens because you're like, well, what do I do next? And then I actually started to realize that some of the people that I had some deep, meaningful relationships with, the second I couldn't 
um, I couldn't, you know, protect them because I was the CEO anymore or, you know, give them what they wanted. Actually, some relationships started breaking down really quickly and I was really hurt by it and I didn't know what it was. In reality, what it was is that the second I lost my power and authority to like do things for them, they started to step away from me and maybe there was a little hurt and resentment. But all that to say, that was a season where I, I didn't like that season at all. It was a very painful season. But you know what it led me to? It led me to this really big self-awareness of my mentality and my self-awareness of in codependency in a lot of cases. And that brought forth healthy relationships and healthy interactions and to build healthier companies and healthier structures in the future. And now, you know, years later, I'm standing on the platform that has built on health. That wouldn't have happened unless I went through the hard thing and the hard realization. Sometimes people have gotten sick. Actually, I have a number of friends that have either um, gotten gotten ill from something that just hit them out of nowhere. Um, one gentleman got in a car or um, ATV accident. Right, he was very, very um, disabled. Actually, he almost died big time. And what I've seen in both of those scenarios is two people who all of a sudden realized that their life. All the things that they had, all of the things that if you had asked them just 24 hours before the accident or even during the first weeks of, of being kind of out of, the, out, of the, out of the game, if you would have asked them what's going to happen to your business and all your stuff, they would be like, I have to be there. I have to keep doing this or else. And what they realized was that they didn't have to. As a matter of fact, there were a lot of people that surrounded them in that time and gave them the opportunity to heal which gave them the opportunity to think, which gave their perspective the opportunity to shift. And now they've come out of those things with a different and better trajectory than they would have had those things not happen. Same thing is true in good seasons. I, I do a lot of work in the automotive industry. In the auto industry, the game has been really good to the auto dealers in the last two years. Yes, the pandemic hit, bad change, right? Everyone's like, no. But what that actually in turn did was allow more favorable conditions for them to get people cars you know, microchip shortage, very bad situation. Everything that they knew about the card business had to change. Flip side is pricing is strong because there is low supply, right? So everyone's coming off of great years in the auto industry. That season changed. And now in the industry, they're thinking, oh, well, the season's about to change again. So it's no longer going to be easy to sell the cars we have. We have to re-gear. We have to reorient. We have to make sure our people are taken care of, make sure the consumers are being focused on. And we have to go in for the next season. All of that seasons, one way to another way, left to right, right to left. They cycle, they circle. Sometimes they feel really good when you get in the season, like I'm right here in this beautiful paradise of upstate New York in October. And sometimes it's really tough. Sometimes it's cloudy every day. Sometimes you wake up and you just have to decide you are going to do it. Sometimes you have to choose you're just going to do it and go through the motions. But I want to encourage you today, whichever one of those positions you're in, is that the season you're in now won't be here forever. The season you're in now will change. And that goes for people that are in good seasons and, and people who are in challenging seasons. So what can you do with all of that? You can make sure you are centered every single day in every single season. Make sure you pay attention to why you are doing what you're doing and let those principles and values lead the way. Healthy people are driven by principles and convictions. Unhealthy people are driven by their feelings and emotions. And I know I'm not saying feelings are bad. I'm not saying emotions are bad. Just the opposite. They're important, but they shouldn't be steering the ship. So that's my thoughts in this beautiful paradise of changing seasons. Be led by your principles and convictions, not by your feelings and emotions, because whether you're in a good season, guess what? The season can shift and pivot. Whether you're in a bad or challenging season, guess what? The season is going to shift and pivot at some point. Thank you for spending some time with me here today. I wish you could be here and feel this crisp air and smell this amazing air. But you can if you want to be. Come to Syracuse, New York. And if you do, let me know. Thanks for being here with me. I'll see you next week.